Hey now YouTube and welcome to week number five and six of how to cycle a salt water tank. And at this point, let's be honest, we're really not cycling much anymore. Everything's stabilized. Uh, we have zero nitrate, zero nitrite, zero ammonia, a little bit of phosphate, which is perfectly normal at this point. Um, but we have no diatoms, we have no algae growing anywhere. So really all we're kind of focused on at this point is what am I going to do with this tank? What kind of corals am I going to introduce to it? And what kind of fish am I going to introduce to it? And this is exactly what I'm doing today. I'm introducing one coral and one fish. So last uh, video that I've uploaded, I talked about my cleanup crew, why I have a cleanup crew, and why I've introduced them at this point in my timeline. Speaking of timeline, let's have a look at my board. If you followed my other videos, you're kind of getting used to this board. We went through week one, two, three, four, and now five and six. Very straightforward. At this point, everything's stabilized, as you can see by you know my uh, awesome illustration here. Um, but most importantly, we're now introducing corals and we're now introducing fish, hardy corals and probably hardy fish. Because remember, I talk about how we should never cycle a tank with fish, only because it's it's really inhumane more than anything. And it's not the best way to cycle a saltwater tank. Live rock is the best way. Live sand is the best way. That cultured bacteria is already there. So let's jump right into it why or how do we acclimate corals and why or how do we acclimate fish two categories very simple i'm going to break it down and make it as simple to understand as possible the first category is you want to acclimate to the temperature so you want your temperature to match the temperature inside the bag that your coral or fish kind of comes in and the reason for that is pretty straightforward because their temperature at the local fish store from the transportation put into a bag to your house to your tank is going to be different so the last thing you want to do is just throw um, a fish in there it's kind of like throwing yourself into a sauna we resist it and sometimes we love it but it's a shock to our system and we start sweating fish react to it very very differently and it's amplified dramatically and it can kill the fish it can kill the invertebrates and it can kill some of the corals um, reason number two category number two is we want to match or not match as soon as we should say match we want to introduce our perimeters to the perimeters that is now in the bag and what I mean by perimeters I mean my salinity my specific gravity my pH my calcium my magnesium uh, my alkal alkalinity so on and so forth, I can keep going for hours, but we want to introduce these perimeters slowly. And this is probably the biggest part to acclimating a fish or a coral, is introducing these perimeters. So I'll give you an example. So I've tested my local fish store's water, just the salinity and just a specific gravity. So you can see that the local fish store was at 1022 or 1 1.022, and mine is at 1024. And same thing with my salinity, mine is at 32 and theirs is at 30. So right away you can see that there's a difference. So this is a simple reason why and I'm not going to go ahead and test their pH and I'm not going to go ahead and test uh, you know their alkalinity, their magnesium, and their calcium. I know for a fact that I need to introduce whatever I have in my tank and this is you know taking into consideration that my perimeters are good. So let's talk about acclimating fish. There are two simple methods to acclimating fish. Number one, if you're a beginner, you're gonna use the floating bag method, which is very straightforward. You just put the bag in the water, you open the top and you slowly introduce some of the water to it. You can do this by, you know, a couple of drips at a time um, with a glass of water or whatever it may be. This is very much the beginner method. However, I don't recommend that you do so. I recommend that you do the drip method. So you get yourself a drip line, very straightforward. You can get this at any local hardware and then you drip it into the bag that the fish comes in. And I do this method by putting my bag into my RODI water. And the reason why I do so is because I have a heater in my fresh water. So my temperature is at 78 degrees currently. So not only am I drip acclimating the fish, but I'm also acclimating the fish to the temperature. So I'm gonna do this for probably the next 
three to four hours. And the reason why I do it for so long is because I don't want to take any risks. And once I've 100% confidently acclimated the fish to my perimeters and to my temperature, what I'm going to do next after that is rapid fish quarantine. So it's a two-part method. I recommend that you buy it uh, from your local fish store. Um, the water's going to turn blue, but I can tell you right now it's not harmful to the fish. And this is... The reason why we do so is to get rid of all the parasites or the potential parasites and bacteria that could harm the rest of your system and introduce to the rest of your system. And the last thing you want to do is introduce these parasites and bacteria that are going to be harmful to the rest of your system and possibly infect the rest. It's not so much of an issue now because we don't have a lot of life and other corals and other fish in here. But if we had say two, three fish and you know 20 30 corals this is definitely not something that we would want to lose just because we weren't taking the proper precautions now of course you've heard of the quarantine tank and i could easily set up my five gallon tank with all the additional and extra equipment that i have and have my fish you know kind of just sit in there for the next month or so but let's be honest you're new to this hobby you're starting out this is week five and six you've looked at an empty tank for the last month month and a half the last thing that you want to do is set up a fish so that it sits inside another tank separate from your main tank for the next month however i will tell you that if ever you grow to the hobby or to the point in this hobby where you can have a quarantine tank definitely do so it is the safest and best approach so what I'm going to do after that, once I've done the quarantine solutions, is I'm going to simply net the fish and put it in my tank. Really straightforward at that point. The reason why I net it and I don't pour it in is simple. I don't want to have the water from my local fish store inside my water, inside my aquarium. I don't know what they do. I don't know how often they clean it. I don't know what parasites they have. They introduce about 150 fish every two weeks. It's just not the kind of risk that I want to take. And this is only going to benefit me in the long run. So let's talk about acclimating corals. Very straightforward. You can do the drip method if you want to. However, I've never really found it necessary unless it's um, very sensitive corals or very sensitive animals like uh, anemones and such. Okay, so let's talk about how to acclimate your corals now. So it's very straightforward and I recommend that you do this method. Uh, it, it's what seems to work best for me and I've never lost a coral due to my acclimation method. So what I do is I simply take a turkey baster or a coral feeder and I introduce the water to it. Remember, this is to introduce my perimeters to the perimeters that it's been living in for the past little while. And I do so slowly over the same time period as my fish being acclimated. So I introduce them pretty much at the same time. And the reason why I want to do this is again because I'm introducing these perimeters into the perimeters that it's been exposed to for the last two weeks, a month, a couple of months, whatever it may be. So that pretty much sums it up for how to acclimate um, fish and how to acclimate corals. Something else that I'll do, um, which is you know kind of a a bit of a, a, a technique that most people don't prefer doing, but I, I dip my corals, which is what you should be doing as well. But if you're a beginner and you don't know what dipping your coral means, um, you dip it into a solution that essentially removes the bacteria and the pests that come uh, on your corals or on the rocks that your corals are uh, attached to and so on and so forth. The other method that you can do, which I tend to do after dipping my coral, is I put it in fresh RODI water for about two minutes. That's it. And then I take it out and I put it in my tank right away. There's a lot of controversy out there about this method. There's a lot of people that don't recommend it for certain corals, especially when it comes to LPSs and SPSs. However, I have never ever lost an SPS or an LPS to dipping my corals in fresh water for a period of two minutes. I'm sure that if I left it in there for five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then it would be a disaster. But it has never been the case for me uh, when it comes to these corals or to this method. 
and it's worked out really, really well. I've never had a tank crash. I've never had parasites introduced into my system. And you know, a lot of people will say to you, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and I'm still a believer in that. Even though it's never happened to me, I know that eventually it will happen. A fish will come, you know, with certain parasites or a coral will have certain parasites and so on and so forth. Um, so that pretty much concludes my video today, guys. I hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down, comment, let's talk about it. Um, you know, subscribe. I'm going to be doing this. This is kind of like my next step in, in this hobby is I want to be able to, to take all of the information and all the experience that I've had for the past, you know, six years of being in this hobby. And I want to give this to you, um, YouTube and the audience and people starting out so that, you know, you learn number one from the mistakes that I've made. Uh, and number two, that you grow a different appreciation and understand a different side of this hobby. So please, you know, subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up or down, comment, let me know what you think. And then ultimately, I'm gonna give you an update on my fish. I bought a black ice clownfish. Uh, he wasn't cheap, he's expensive. I don't recommend that you buy an expensive fish in the beginning for the uh, obvious reason that you're a beginner and you're just starting out. However, I've become somewhat of an expert in this hobby and I decided I'm gonna go with fish that I absolutely want to see. So I'm gonna do an update on the fish and how he's doing um, and then you're gonna be able to see black eyes clownfish 